Hi everyone, it's Paige Nestor with Creek House Honey Farm and today we're going to take you guys on a virtual bee tour. Um, we're hopefully going to see everything you would need to know about the honeybee in the hive and here we go. And so we're going to start off um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I'm using. This is called a smoker and the smoker is a great tool. You almost have to have one if you're a beekeeper. Uh, what the smoke does for the bees is it it's kind of mean it makes them think that their house is on fire so what would you do if your house is on fire you would probably maybe grab your little sister and maybe your phone or your computer and you would get out so what they're doing is they're packing up the most important thing that they have which is their honey and they're leaving or they're planning to leave so we smoke them just a little bit to make them want to engorge that honey and when they do that, it makes them feel like after, you know, uh, you eat at Thanksgiving, like a Thanksgiving dinner or meal, and you're a little bit lethargic, that's how the bees feel. They feel a little bit woozy. And so they leave the beekeeper alone. The other thing that smoking does is it uh, masks the alarm pheromone that they put out. They put out a pheromone that smells like a fruit, and it's a banana. And so we always tell beekeepers, don't ever go and tend your hive if you've had a banana. Uh, we did have a friend that peeled a banana one time and got stung multiple times before he could get to his hive. So it really is a thing. But we're gonna mask that pheromone and then we're also going to make him engorge some honey. So to do smoke, we use a little bit of pine needles. Uh, if you live in the south, uh, you're gonna have a lot of pine needles. We don't up here and the panhandle because we kind of live in an arid desert climate. We also use cotton burrs. We do have a lot of cotton uh, in these parts. And so, and then a torch. We're gonna use a good torch to light that. I don't wanna wait forever on a match or a lighter. So we're gonna torch this fuel. And we wanna be really careful. It's really green out here right now because we've had a lot of rain. But we really don't want to set a pasture on fire. And so at Creek House Honey Farm, we try to be really careful about that. Um, so if it's ever really dry out here, we usually light our smoker where it's more protected and it won't uh, catch anything on fire. But today we're good. So Italian bees, one thing about them, not only are they golden in color, but they are also very gentle. And we keep a few of these hives around but they're almost so gentle that they're a little bit lethargic. Um, they don't bring in a lot of honey during the summer. They wait until the end of the, uh, the beginning of the fall to really start storing up, which is kind of strange. Um, but that's at least what we've experienced with our Italians. Um, you might have a different experience if you're a beekeeper, but they tend to wait later in the year. Don't know why. Okay, so this is called a Langstroth hive. And right now we have two deeps or two brood boxes on here. In the summertime, we really want to add shallows or supers so that they can add honey to those. But we never take honey from these bigger boxes. This is a telescoping cover. And uh, right now we still have a feeder on these girls because we're just now coming into spring and uh, they really still need food to be able to survive. I'm going to just pop this off and got some mold in it so I'm going to throw it away. Lots of bees on the bottom just kind of going about their business but the reason we use a one of these top feeders they kind of filled it with comb is because in the winter time if we have this on here it's got some mold growth in it um, we don't ever have to get into their hive we can just pour the sugar water in here and we don't disturb the bees. And so it keeps the inner core warm. Because bees in the winter, they just stay in a ball. Kind of like we're having to stay inside right now. They stay inside most of the winter. They get out to defecate uh, or to collect water if it's above 50. But they get in the center here and they cluster together and they vibrate to keep warm. And the queen is always right in the center of that cluster. Right now, they're not really clustered because it's a warm day. And I'm going to start taking out some frames so you can see it. These outside frames are kind of like the bees' hallways. 
we never really get too concerned if they don't fill up the outside frame. Um, they're usually empty. If they're on a good nectar flow, then they'll fill it up. And so what, what nectar flow is, is when there's lots of flowers out, like there's getting to be a lot of flowers right now. They're still not quite enough for the bees to survive on their own. That's why we're still feeding. But whenever we have them on like a cotton field, for example, they can bring in a lot of nectar, like pounds per hive per day. And that's when we start to see these outer frames fill up. Right now they're really not. And that's okay. They're putting a little bit in there. So this frame is kind of darker calm. And that's where brood has been before. Babies are brood, that's what I'm talking about. And they're putting a little bit of nectar in there right now. I, let me get a good one. These bees are so gentle and calm. We could almost not even be in a suit, but I don't recommend that. I'm not saying that. Uh, you still need to be geared up because they can turn on you, but they're sweet. These are towels. So nice. Okay, so do you see the shiny? That's nectar, and in between, some of the yellow is pollen. And this is just a frame that they're storing on. The bees are going about their business. They're probably regurgitating that nectar into that comb. They can also pass it from each other's mouth to mouth and regurgitate, um, which seems to be disgusting, I know, but that's how they do it. If bees did not, um, well, let me talk about that. So when a bee goes to a flower, she has a proboscis tongue and that proboscis tongue is like a straw and she slurps the nectar from the flower and she has a stomach crop and she stores it in that crop. It's kind of almost like if we go to the grocery store and we have a grocery bag, we're gonna take our groceries in the bag. Same thing with the bee. But her stomach crop has really good enzymes and so already that nectar is starting to be turned into honey before she even gets back to the hive. The enzymes in the bee's tummies are what makes honey really good for us and for them. So it has to go through that process. Once they get it back to the hive and it's in this shape right here, which is very, very liquidy. I can almost shake that liquid on the ground. I'm not going to, but that's how liquidy that is. The bees are gonna actually fan this nectar with, with their wings and add some pollen to it and it's gonna thicken into honey. And the way we know that the honey's ready is it becomes capped and this is a frame that has white capped honey. So they carry pollen on their pollen baskets in the, on the back side of their legs and they're really not baskets, they're just tiny compromised hairs that they stick it all down with. And so those girls are looking for a place to drop it. This pollen has been dropped, and now they're gonna go and they're gonna stick it in there. I'll help them out, Let's see if we can. Pollen is the source of protein for the bees. Pollen is fed mainly to young larvae in a source called bee bread. Bee bread is made of a lot of pollen and a little bit of nectar and fed to the babies. Okay, so this is a great frame of brood or babies and it's all capped and it looks fabulous. It's she, the queen, it has a great brood pattern. That means there's not a lot of holes in it. She's not skipping a lot of cells. And the brood here at the bottom is drone brood. And you can definitely see, oh, that was a bee. Definitely see that it's more like a popcorn or like kick cereal shape. Um, those drones are bigger than the worker girls. By the way, all the bees in this hive are female. The females are the ones that do all the work for the hive. Drones mate with the queen, that's their only job. The girls feed them and even carry out their poop. That's funny, right? Look at this girl. She has pollen on her legs. Wonder if she's gonna deposit. She's 
probably just getting a little sip right there. So they're storing all of their nectar and pollen around the brood nest so that it's easily accessible to feed the larva. And these larva have already been fed and capped. Oh, baby. This baby girl just hatched out and you can tell because look how light she is and how furry she is. Wow, she's new. This little girl's new too. So when bees first hatch out, they really don't know how to fly. They don't know how to do much of anything. Oh, look at her, she's waggling. She's got pollen on her legs. Um, they just hatch and they their first job is to be a housekeeper. So they're gonna clean out their cell and they're gonna clean out all the cells around them. And then they're gonna start feeding babies. They're gonna be a nursery attendant. And then they might be a guard at the front door but they're gonna live three weeks in the hive before they even decide to get out. So the bees that have pollen on their legs are at least three weeks old or older. And one really cool thing that just has happened in the last, I don't know, few months or this year, scientists have figured out that bees that are three weeks old or older actually have a smell to them or a pheromone that they emit. And, um, and newbies do not. So a lot of the times we'll get in a hive and there will be definitely like a buckfast bee or a Russian bee that's in with like Italians or there might be an Italian bee over there. And it makes sense because if they're out doing a flight orientation and they're learning and they're not quite three weeks old, they don't have that pheromone smell that alerts the other bees that, hey, this is a different bee and we need a killer. Um, because all the bees that are coming in now, this is their home, but there's also bees that try to rob this hive. And so that's why you need guards at the entrance because honeybees are like one of the worst predators on another beehive. Big hives will pick on small hives. So we don't really want that to happen. Okay, let me see what this one's doing. Okay. Ooh, that has a lot of larvae. Can you can you see that? So these are larvae. They're they're a little bit older larvae, and the way I can tell is because they're fat and they're taking up the bottom of the cell. There might also be some eggs. Okay, guys, this is a drone. He's a new drone. We know because they've just started hatching because it's just now getting to be spring. Um, they're kind of, well, they are bigger, definitely bigger. They have fuzzy bottoms and they have big eyes and they are bigger than the girls. And so in the fall and the winter time, the girls actually kick them out. <laughs> they don't want to have to put up with them all winter. So in the winter time, there's not a lot of drones in a hive and there's just now getting to be drones in this hive. But a lot of new beekeepers get drones confused with queens. That is not a queen, that's a drone. This is a frame with a lot of new eggs. And I can see them. I'll try to show you a picture of them, but an egg is just, it just looks like a little bitty piece of rice down in the very center of the cell. The queen has a very long abdomen, so her uh, bottom can reach the very bottom of the cell where it's supposed to go. Okay guys, so this is a top feeder and I showed you one up earlier, but it didn't look very good because those bees had really messed it up. But you can see this one has some uh, sugar water in the top. We put a bit of lemongrass and then we can see in the winter time if the bees are up taking the feed. And we don't ever break their propolis seal. Propolis is what the bees get from tree leaves or sap. 
and it's um, anti-everything. It's kind of like their little hospital uh, for them. It's antifungal, antibacterial, and we use it in a lot of our healing products. It's what's so good for inflammation. So I'm gonna real quick, I'm not gonna disturb that because it still looks good. I'm just gonna show you what propolis looks like. This right here, this is propolis, this really brown stuff kind of golden brown this, uh, that they've got the frames glued down with. And so that's why we use a hive tool. Got my hive tool today. That's one of the other things that I have to have when I go to a hive. It's got a little J hook on it so that I could easily lift out frames. But the propolis is what's all along these edges. And it's just like bee glue. That's what a common name for it is. And they glue everything down with it including all the cracks so that when it's cold, you know, it keeps the cold weather out. But we come out and we scrape this propolis off and that would go in our healing products. And that seems disgusting, but it's very healthy for humans. Fever blisters, it'll take care of a fever blister super quick. Uh, canker sores, um, wounds, any kind of uh, burn that you might have, that stuff is great for that. So I'm gonna actually put this in my pocket and keep it. Okay, so this hive actually is a buckfast hive. They're really dark bees or carniolan hive. I think it's a carny hive, but a little bit different than an Italian. This is what capped honey looks like. And this is actually crystallized already, which means that a lot of people say goes to sugar. Well, it doesn't really go to sugar. Honey is sugar. So when they pour, pull nectar from flowers, it is a high concentration of sugars. Uh, glucose, fructose, and so what happens, especially with cotton honey, is it will eventually crystallize, but all real honey should do this, um, and a lot of people are scared of that because they think it's gone bad, and it really hasn't. Um, it just needs some warmth to it, and so if you heat honey up, it'll turn right back to liquid. All this is pretty much liquid right here, and so the bees, this is all capped, which means it's all been finished and done. And that's how we know as beekeepers that it's ready to take. And I'm not gonna take any of this from them because this is their brood box. This is where they keep their babies, but this, this hive has a ton of honey on it. So really, it probably doesn't need a feeder at all. Look at all this honey. Those bees have done a good job of having enough for stores for winter time. Because this is not new honey, this is fall honey. A lot of people ask us too, like, when do you pull honey? Well, we don't, we don't collect or gather or pull honey um, until usually July is a good time for us. So July, August, September, October, those are our months that we pull. Right now the bees are gathering honey and we're just waiting. Oh, there's the queen right there, boom. So this is a queen. She's got that leftover green dot on her from where we marked her last year. Um, what green means is 2019. We know that. Uh, we want to know that because uh, we're going to end up replacing her this year. Um, a lot of apiaries in the United States, well, most of them, they replace their queens every year just to ensure that they're fresh and new and laying sufficient eggs. Um, I showed you the brood pattern earlier of that other queen. It was great, so I might give her a couple more months before I replace her, but um, this queen, I see eggs and I see larva. I don't know, like I'm gonna make sure that she's safe right here, but I don't know what her brood pattern looks like yet, so I'm just gonna keep kind of going. And she may be one of the first ones I replace if it's not a good brood pattern. Uh, we can't get queens until April here. And see this brood pattern um, is a little more spotty. What you can't see and I can, I don't know if you can see it with the camera, is there are lots of larvae down in there though. So she is doing a fairly decent job, um, but she still, I'm, I'll replace her because it's not like the other queen. So 
so this is a different hive and some things I haven't talked about yet um, we're definitely in a tree break down here it's a great wind break but in the winter time these trees don't have leaves so wind can get through so we do use hay blocks in the winter I had somebody asking me that the other day like what do you guys use and that's what we use um, in the winter this hive has two brood boxes or two deeps and a shallow or super so in the springtime we start adding these we don't have a lot of hives out here right now that have them because we're not into a nectar flow yet even though you're seeing blooms on the fruit trees does not mean these bees have enough to eat they need millions and millions of blossoms to be able to survive so in her lifetime one bee will collect one twelfth of a teaspoon that's not a whole lot when you think about it it takes I think 4.5 million flowers or something like that just to make a pound of honey which is 16 ounces so we have to have millions and millions of flowers out here before we're good to go um, and and it confuses a lot of people like why we can't get honey year-round but that's why we don't live in the tropics desert. These bees are a carniola bee. They're really dark. <clears throat> I'm going to smoke them a little bit so they'll know that they're beekeepers here. They really don't ever know us. People ask us that too. Do your bees know you? I wish they did. We don't have little collars on them like you do your dog. <laughs> uh, they die every six weeks so they're never going to know us and they are a wild being and so we have to be very respectful of that so we're always careful if you notice how slow i'm moving in these hives i'm not moving fast i'm not making a lot of noise because i don't want to make them mad uh, they do have stingers and one of them can't really i mean it'll hurt if it stings you can't like kill you probably unless you're allergic but a lot of them can hurt you bad so we don't want that Okay. Just kind of seeing what they're up to. This is another pollen frame. A lot of bees busy. These bees aren't like those Italians. They're moving around a little faster. They're buzzy. I can hear them in the air. So this is a hive that I would probably not stay in very long, just because I know if I stay in them too long, it's gonna really kind of irritate them and I don't want to make them mad. I'm just out here trying to educate we've already checked all these hives they all have queens we know they're healthy uh, this brood pattern doesn't look that great but I do see larva uh, I do see food I see the nectar and the pollen on the outside so at this point I'm probably gonna say okay this hives all right and I'll shut it up that was course that big one right there yeah so this is a queen cell and that's not a, I mean, it's a, it's a normal thing because these girls are, they're getting ready to swarm. Um, not a great thing because I can't get queens yet. These are queen cells in the middle of this frame. They are peanut shaped. The queen is a much bigger female bee than the workers because she is a fertilized bee. She carries all the, all of the sperm and eggs that she will ever use in her entire lifetime and that is why her abdomen is so big. This is a queen cell with royal jelly and a larva floating on top. Royal jelly is a secretion from the bee's glands and they basically spit it into the cell and the larva floats on top and eats that royal jelly. Um, most new bees start off on a pool of royal jelly and eat it for about two to three days. Then the bees stop that and they start giving them bee bread. Queens, however, eat royal jelly their entire lifetime, and this is what turns them into a queen. So, um, I think I've covered a lot today for you guys to try to learn about bees, and I'll go back and we'll put some more stuff in this video, but I just want to thank you for joining us, and I hope after uh, the COVID-19 has cleared the air that a lot of you can come on bee tours. We have them, we'll have them starting in May as long as that's done with. 
and uh, you can sign up online right now and reserve your spot at greenhousehoneyfarm.com. Um, but you can come out with us and we can show you all this in person, which is super fun to do. Um, you'll learn really quick that it's really fun to be a beekeeper and to be able to take care of a creature that's so important to our world. Without them, we would lose a third of our world's crops. And you think the grocery stores are empty now? They would be empty all the time with no pollinators. So it's very important that we learn about these guys. And I'm going to be doing some more videos, hopefully over the next week or two, so that you can learn a little bit more about how to take care of them and how to help us, even if you don't want to be a beekeeper. So thanks so much again, and we hope you join us on our next one. Have a great day.